Hey, Shalom. This is Aharon. Uh, I'm making this video in response to uh, the Kefir, Kefir Bible. Uh, sorry it took me so long to uh, get to uh, put this together. Uh, I'm making this video in response to an email I sent to Kefir about one of the changes they made with their book. Uh, I'm going to read you what I wrote them and what they responded uh, before I get into uh, my answer. Uh, I sent this message off to uh, at their website and it says, uh, I received my kefir yesterday and the first thing I checked in his book highly disappointed me. Uh, the error you guys made in no way should have slipped through a whole group of people. Uh, you, you should not have tampered with the genealogies of the Messiah in Matthew and Luke. You switched the genealogies. Um, the obvious mistake is all the genealogies of men in the Bible go from top down, oldest to youngest. Second, if Mary's genealogy is in Matthew uh, and she descends from Solomon and not Nathan, the Messiah could not legally inherit the throne of David because of Jeremiah 22, uh, uh, verse 24 through 30. And then I posted uh, the scriptures uh, from Jeremiah 22, uh, 24 through 30. Uh, and I continue to say, uh, your book is saying the Messiah inherited, inherited the, the throne illegally and is not rightfully king. Uh, you need to change the genealogies back. I'm so disappointed. I really want to send it, send it back because if you made such an obvious mistake, how many other mistakes have been made? I will be looking for, I will be looking for um, other errors. Uh, the response I got, uh, my first, the first response I got was, "Thank you for your comments, Aaron. Please read the two blog posts from our website linked below." that will provide an explanation. Well, I read it and I, I saw a few things. I had uh, uh, discrepancies with, with, with your uh, blog site. And uh, then I got another email. And it says, uh, Dear Aaron, uh, there was one change made in the genealogies in Matthew and Luke. And that was made with one word. They changed one word. Uh, which was the change made in Matthew. Um, the order of the genealogies remained consistent with all English texts and underlying Steph Stephanus Texas Receptus. Uh, if you believe that the correction made in Matthew 1 was incorrect, please distinguish for us the 42 genealogies and draw the similarities between the genealogies in Luke 3 with Matthew 1. Particularly align the father, grandfather, and great grandfather of Joseph in both books. We will be awaiting your response. And uh, I responded and said, Hi, Stephan. Uh, thank you for your response. I am preparing my answer. Uh, and this is this will be uh, my answer uh, to what he, what he requested of me. I'm glad that uh, he responded the way he did because I had a whole different um, uh, I looked at it a whole lot different. Uh, after he responded the way he did, um, because it shows that uh, they're open to uh, listening to uh, being corrected, and that's that's always a good thing. So I'm going to uh, bring forth my answer because that one word that they changed actually uh, changed that whole changed the uh, changed Matthew one into blasphemy. It's blasphemy. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring forth my answer. Shalom. As I get started, I just wanted to point out a few things uh, to make a point clear to anybody who may not understand uh, why I'm saying what I'm saying, just to be clear. Uh, first, I want to start with, uh, I want to start with uh, Luke. I'm going to start with Luke 130, uh, chapter 1. Uh, verse 30 through uh, 37 uh, and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for you have found favor with Yah and behold you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son 
and shall call his name Yehoshua. Uh, he shall be great, and shall shall be called the son of the highest. And and Yah power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She was a virgin, she knew not a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The set apart spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that set apart thing, or because of that set apart thing which shall be born of you, shall be called the son of son of Yah. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, uh, who was called barren, for with Yah nothing shall be impossible. Okay, so not only is Elizabeth going to uh, bear a child in her old age, and she was barren on top of that, but uh, Mary is going to conceive without, without, uh, laying with a man just by the by the spirit of um the most high yah just by his spirit she's going to uh conceive and bring forth um the messiah i don't okay and anyway uh in verse 32 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest not joseph's son but the son of the most high and yah power shall give unto him the throne of his father david this is all about david's throne David's seed, uh, not Solomon's seed, not uh, Joseph's seed, just David's seed. That's the only seed we need to be concerned with because that's the only seed it's promised to. It's not mentioned that it will come through Solomon or mentioned that it will come through uh, uh, Joseph. So I want to jump over to uh, Matthew uh, 118, 118 through 25. Um, now the birth of Yehoshua Messiah was on this way. Uh, when, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the set apart spirit. Uh, before they came together, before he laid with her, she was found with the child of the set apart spirit. Just what the angel told her that would happen. Same thing he told her would happen. That's what it's saying. He, she was found with the child of the set apart spirit. And she was espoused to Joseph before they came together, before they laid together. That's why he's thinking of putting away. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the set-apart spirit. It's the third time it was said child is of the set apart spirit not of Joseph that's why he's called the son of Yah son of the most high and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Yehoshua for she he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of Yah by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel uh, which being interpreted as Yah with us, and the maidens were virgins. She's a young woman of maritable age. The young women of maritable age were virgins. They were virgins. Uh, then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of Yah had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, uh, verse 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yehoshua. Okay. Mary said, I knew not a man, and here in verse um, 1 and 25, it says, and knew her not. He did not know her sexually, intimately. He had not lain with her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yehoshua. And that's confirmed uh, with both of them, out of mouths of two or three witnesses. She said the same thing that it says here. He knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yehoshua. Okay, I want to jump over to uh, Galatians. I'm going to Galatians 4.4. 4. Uh, just wanted to point out, but when the fullness of time was come, Yah sent forth his son, 
made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons okay they were in what we call the old testament times they were under the uh what 664 laws which we really are still under uh even though some uh disagree with that uh it wasn't only uh the 664 laws but it was a specific law the specific law he was uh made of a woman made under a specific law not only all all uh, 664 laws but um a specific law which we just uh skip past when we look at numbers we're going to read from our uh, numbers 27 and 1 down to 27 and 11. Then came the daughters of Zelopahad, the son of Heper, the son of uh, Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala, um, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, Terzah, and they stood before Mo Moshe and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yah in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from amongst his family? Because he had no son. Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moshe brought their call before Yah, and Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, The daughters of Zelopahad speak right. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and you shall cause the inheritance of their fathers to pass unto them. And you shall speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. What we're talking about is the inheritance of David's throne. We're talking about uh, an inheritance. He's inheriting the throne of his father David. The Messiah is inheriting David's throne. Uh, and this is the law when it comes to women. There's no getting around the law. This is the law. If a man die and have no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if you and if he have no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if you have if he have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as Yah commanded Moshe. Okay, that's how women are to in, uh, inherit. Okay, let's jump over. To the stipulations of this uh, specific law. We're going to Numbers uh, 36. We're going to start at verse 6. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you should read the whole chapter, but we're going to, for time's sake, we're going to jump down to 36, uh, verse 6 to uh, 13. Uh, this is the thing which Yah does command concerning the daughters of Zelopahad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. They have to marry only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So we're looking at Zelop the daughters of Zelopahad, whose uh, tribe was Manasseh. So they have to marry within the tribe of Manasseh. Same thing for Mary. Mary is from the tribe of Judah. She has to marry from uh, the tribe of Judah. Whoever she marries has to be from the tribe of Judah because she has an inheritance. But we're going to see that. Uh, verse 7. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possess an inheritance in any tribe... Mary, Mary uh, possesses an inheritance in the tribe of Judah of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance 
of his father. Okay, so not only does she have to marry into the tribe of her father, not only does she have to marry into the tribe, but she also has to marry into the family, into her family of that tribe, her own family. Uh, shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. So we're talking about the inheritance of David's throne. That's the inheritance we're looking at. That's what we're talking about. In uh, the case of uh, Mary and Joseph and the Messiah. Uh, Even as Yah commanded Moshe, so did the daughters of Zelopahad. For Mala, Terza, Hogla, Milka, Noah, the daughters of Zelopahad were married unto their fathers, brothers, sons. They married their cousins. They not only married into the tribe of Manasseh, but they married their fathers, brothers, sons, their cousins. They had to marry into not only the tribe, but into the family same family the, the inheritance stays in the family by marrying into the tribe and the family of your father or the family uh your immediate family one of your cousins in this case the father's brothers sons which is the exact same case we see in the case of the messiah and uh um, joseph and mary exact same case uh 36 and 12 and they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh the sons of Joseph and their inheritance remains in the tribe of their family of their father these are the commandments see that these are the commandments and the judgments which Yah commanded by the hand of Moshe unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho okay okay I want to jump over to uh, a point I just wanted to point out quickly Romans 1 and 3 Shaul uh, I'm sorry I'm just go straight I'm just go straight to it Romans 1 and 3 concerning his son Yehoshua Messiah our master which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh not Joseph's seed not Solomon's seed David's seed that's the only seed that we dealing with is David's See, that's the stipulation. That was the promise. The promise did not go to Solomon. The promise did not go to Joseph. It went to David and David's seed. So the stipulation is any of David's seed uh, could have inherited inherited this pro this promise. And it didn't. It was no specific seed. It just said it's just said concerning the son of your just concerning his son Yehoshua Messiah, our master, which was made. Of the seed of David according to the flesh and there's no discrepancies with that the seed of David saying uh, some people get confused uh, about whose seed we talking about we only talking about uh, David's seed uh, okay now now let's go to let's go to the uh, Let's take a look at the lineages. Okay, I'm gonna pull this over. I'm gonna pull this over on the other side to show the lineage. To show the lineage I'm talking about here. This is the lineage from the Kefir Bible. This is the lineage. We have uh, Abraham, Yishak, uh Jacob, uh, Yehuda, Perez, uh, Ketzron, Aram, Aminadab. Uh, Nakshan, Solomon, Boaz, Ovid, Yeshay, David the King. You see that's 14. Uh, it was said that it was 14 generations uh, in each group. Each group from, from Abraham down was 14. From Slomo down was 14. From uh, the going into Babylon would be 14 as well. So these are, this is how it's lined up in the uh, Kefir. You know, uh, uh, Abraham, yes, um, Isaac, son of Abraham, Jacob, son of Isaac, you know, and all the way down, so forth, so on, you know, uh, take a look in the, in the book of Matthew. This is Matthew, this is the genealogy in Matthew 1. Uh, and we can see uh, 
Number 14 is Yehoiakim. Yehoiakim, which is Konia. Yehoiakim is Konia. Okay? And then we got uh, Shethiel, uh, with the, um, going away into Babylon. All the way down to uh, here we have Yosef, the father of. They changed uh, Yosef. Uh, the husband of Mary into Joseph the father of and that changed this whole I'm the reason I'm making this video because the, changing that one word Joseph the father changing changing just changing father from husband changing the word husband into uh Joseph the father of Miriam of whom was born Ye Yehoshua who was called Mashiach made this whole this whole uh lineage blasphemy it, it it made everything it made the whole lineage blasphemy and it uh it blemished the messiah he cannot inherit the throne if joseph is the father of Miriam. and i'm, go I'm going to point that out and then i'm going to show you uh i'm going to show you uh why why it's like it, it is it should have stayed they shouldn't have changed they, and that's funny how you change one word of the of the father's word you take one word and change it in the father's word and you just blaspheme the whole you know just corrupted the whole thing and i basically when i bought the book i was so disappointed i haven't read it i haven't read it uh since um i'm actually uh me and some friends are checking the book of enoch but I wasn't even reading from it. I couldn't pick it up. It it, it really angered me that uh, they decided to uh, change that one word and uh, basically just got a book of blasphemy. You know, as far as I can see it. So with that, I want to I want to point out a few more things about this lineage before I show you uh, show you. The lineage, um, the lineage again. Before I bring the lineage back up, I'm going to uh, show you a few things. I want to show you. Uh, let's go to. Uh, hmm. <laughs> let's go over to uh, Second Chronicles 36. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 36. Okay, we're gonna start at uh, verse 5 down to 10. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah, uh, his power. Um, against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off the vessels of the house of Yah to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him behold they are written in the book of kings of Israel and Judah and uh, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. Uh, verse 9 Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that, which is evil in the sight of Yah. And and um, even though it says uh, he was eight years old, um, it's a discrepancy here. It's looking like a mistranslation. Um, uh, I think it's Second Kings. Yeah, Second Kings. I will take a look at that. It says he was eighteen, which is actually actually the same word. So it's a mistranslation in there too. Um, you know, it's, it's mistranslations in this book. You know. Whether they be mistakes or whether they be uh, obvious, whether they be uh, deceptions, um, there are uh, mistranslations. Uh, verse 10, And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of Yah, and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, Jehoiakim, Jehoi Jehoiachin is Konia. That's Konia. Jehoiachin is Konia. 
Uh, I'm gonna jump over to Second Kings. Jump over to Second Kings right quick. Twenty-four. Second Kings twenty-four, starting uh, verse eight. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehusha, the daughter of uh, El Nathan of Jerusalem. Okay, this is Jehoiakim uh, also. And it's funny, they, you know, they, they kind of play with the names. Uh, some of the kings have two names, some of the kings have three names, and there's really no explanation why they have these uh, different names that I found anyway but uh, Jehoiachin Jehoia Chin is Konia we're gonna jump over to Jeremiah 22 Jeremiah 22 24 through 30 24 through 30 as I live says Yah through Konia the son of Jehoiakim the king of Judah were the signet upon my right hand. Yet would I pluck you then. So signet on the right hand is a sign. It is it's like a identification. A signet ring identifies who the wearer is. You know, depending on who you are, I guess uh, you would have a ring uh, specifically for you. Nobody else would have a ring like that, and it and it'll uh, identify you. So I guess it would be like a driver's license, like we got today. Um, uh, Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, was signet upon my right hand, yet I would pluck you up. And I will give you into the hand of them that seek your life, and into the hand of them whose faces you fear, even unto the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. And I will cast you out, and your mother that bear you into another country where you were not born, and there shall you die. But to the land whereon they desire to return, there shall they not return. Is this man Konia a despised broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein there is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out? Why does he get cast out after three months of ruling? He and his seed and are cast into a land which they know not. O earth, 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 hear the word of Yah. Thus says Yah, write you this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. So Yah called to the whole earth. He called to the whole earth in that day and back in that day and this day. He's calling to the whole earth. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. Thus says Yah, write you this man childless, Konia. A man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. So Konia is being cursed. He's being ripped off the throne, sent into Babylon, and told that none of his seed uh, can rule any more in Judah. None of his seed can rule any more in Judah. Okay. Okay. With that being said, I want to jump over back over to let's jump over. I'm gonna pull my uh I'm gonna pull my uh lineage back over my lineage back over here okay uh, if you would have uh, I don't know if you guys noticed but uh, my first 14 match 14 of the Kefir this is where my discrepancies are with the Kefir here's my 14 for the Messiah. You have the Messiah, Joseph, the husband of Mary, and so on back up to Jaconia. Jaconia in the King James Version is Konia. In Matthew uh, 1 and 11, I believe, 
Matthew 1 11 is a uh, Konya but we missing 14 here this is not and and let me point out this is not 14 consecutive uh, back-to-back uh, lineage this is not the whole lineage this is not the whole lineage down to the Messiah he just took 14 14 each for whatever reason I don't know I don't I can't answer why he did it I don't I have no idea I've looked I've tried to figure it out I've tried to find out I just don't know uh, whatever the case I do know according to I'm gonna come I'm gonna, I want to come back to this I want to come back to this uh, the name that really should be here is Jehoiakim Jeconia is not Josiah's son. If you notice when we just read uh, Jeremiah 22, it said uh, Jeconias or Konia, son of Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim is number 14. And that is what evens out. For some reason, it looks like uh, when a king uh, does something wrong, it looks like they don't mention his name. You know, if he was uh, wicked, it looks like they... And I'm just going off of uh, Pekah, the son of Remalia. I Isaiah just called him the son of Remalia. He called him Pekah like, like once in the scriptures and then called him the son of Remalia, the son of Remalia, and uh, never used his name. And maybe that's why, you know, they did it like this. Um, I, I do, I'm going to point out uh, where I got this from and why I'm saying this. So I'm going to just shrink this back down. I'm going to point out here. In 2224, Koniah, the son of Jehoiakim. He's the son of Jehoiakim. I just pointed that out in this verse, and we saw that in uh, Second Chronicles and Second Kings that I just read. Um, son of Jehoiakim. Okay, uh, I want to I want to point something out. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this lineage right here, um, from Solomon down to uh, Josiah, and I just wanted you to point out that if you notice I got a little marker right here by Joram. Joram is uh, the last king and then it skips three kings. There's three kings that skip. So this is this lineage is not a consecutive lineage. It's not back to back uh genealogy. Uh that's Joram, this Ozias is actually King Uziah. That's King Uziah. So let's jump over to uh first Chronicles three Jump over to First Chronicles three. We're gonna start with Solomon, uh, uh, verse three, chapter three and ten, verse ten. Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Abiah, Asa, his son Jehoshaphat, his son Joram. <clears throat> That's why I had the marker on the lineage, Joram. Okay, we skipped Ahaziah. We skipped his son Joash. We skipped his son Amaziah. Looked like all three of those kings got judged by Yah. That's probably why they're not in the lineage. Uh, and then it picks up with Azariah. Azariah is King Uziah. King Azariah is King Uziah. If you notice, uh, it jumped from Joram down to Uzziah in the lineage. Uh, that's King Uziah. Now, if you compare the scriptures in Second Chronicle 26 and 1, and uh, Second Kings chapter 14 and uh, verse 21, compare those two verses, and you'll see Uziah and Azariah are the very same. Uh, king. What I did notice, I wanted to point out about um, King uh, Ahaziah was that he had two different names. If you look at, uh, if you take a look at Second uh, uh, Chronicles 22 and 6, Second Chronicles, we'll jump over there real quick, 22 and 6, you'll see, uh, and Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram the son of Ahab at Jezreel because he was sick and if you look right here it says Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah uh, reigned and that's who it's talking about and that's who went to see King uh, Joram or King Jehoram uh, they use both names for that king uh, as well he got two different names and we can jump over to uh, 2nd Kings 8 and 29 2nd Kings 8 and uh, uh, 8 and 29 and King Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah when he fought against 
Ahaziel, Ahaziel, king of Syria, and Ahaziel, see that, Ahaziel, the son of Joram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, and Jezreel, because he was sick. See, but they, uh, for some reason, I don't know, I guess it's, you know, it looks like it's probably deception to me, um, but it's definitely a mistranslation that uh, Azariah is actually Ahaziah. They changed the name right there for some reason. And then it picks up again, as you can see, Ahazia, Ahazia. I don't know what, why that would be that way, except to cause uh, confusion. But I just wanted to uh, point that out. And if you uh, actually look at uh, First Chronicles uh, 3, uh, we got these three kings. And we got uh, uh, Josiah, um, Josiah, which we've seen in the lineage of uh, Matthew. Uh, Firstborn Jehanan, son Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, the fourth Shalom, and the sons of Jehoiakim was Koniah. You see, Jehoiakim is uh, Jeconiah's father, or Koniah's father, and Josiah is Koniah's grandfather. But in Matthew 1, you see that it skipped, uh, it skipped over Jehoiakim. It skipped right over Jehoiakim. So that's who belongs in uh, the 14th spot of that lineage, Jehoiakim. Yep. Put Jehoiakim right there. That will make it 14. That will make the lineage 14. Right there. So I just wanted to Therefore, write. thus says Yah of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. Ah, so we have Jehoiakim cursed also. We just saw in Jeremiah 22 that uh, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, or Koniah, I'm sorry, Jeconiah, uh, was cursed. He was cursed in uh, Jeremiah 22. Um, and here we see. Jehoiakim his father he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost he's going to get thrown in the street and he he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David the throne is being ripped from Jehoiakim and Koniah was cursed not to have a son to sit on so that's two curses two different people we Koniah was cursed. Jehoiakim was cursed not to have a son to sit on the throne of David. And uh, that's what we see when you make Mary, when you change that one word, that one word you changed in Matthew 1, that one word you changed, Joseph, from husband to father of Mary. You blemish the lamb. You blemish the lamb. You blas blaspheming the Messiah. You're saying that he was a blemished lamb. You're saying that he inherited the throne even though he was cursed not to be able to receive it. You're saying he received it anyway. And anybody that studies scripture should know that you can't get around a curse. You don't get around the curse. The curse is put there specifically for a reason. He, he cursed he cursed Koniah, that's why he cried to the whole earth to pay attention why he was cursing Koniah because of the doctrine that I believe it's the very doctrine that's out now that Joseph is the Messiah's father. So you would know he can't be the father and the Messiah inherit the throne. If Joseph is, you can't have it both ways. If Joseph is his father, he can't inherit the throne and he's not our Messiah. We waiting on somebody else. If Joseph is his father. And that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. And that's what you're saying. He's not our Messiah. If he got an earthly father, he's not our Messiah. Because he can't come through that cursed lineage. That's a blemish. He's a blemish lamb if he come through that lineage. And we know first Peter. First Peter. One and 19 but with the precious precious blood of Messiah as of a lamb without blemish and without spot 
You blemish the lamb. I change it one word of the scriptures. You blemish the lamb. We can look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. Wherefore I give, give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of Yah calls Yehoshua a curse. And that no man can say that Yehoshua is the master but by the set apart spirit. Now it says that, it says that, <laughs> wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of Yah. So it's a whole nother spirit if you saying, if you saying the Messiah is accursed. If you say the Messiah is accursed, you under a, a different spirit than the Father. You under a whole different spirit. Uh... No man can say that Yehoshua is the master but by the set apart spirit. You're saying he's accursed. By switching that one word, you made him accursed. Accursed. Okay. Let's, let's, and let's look at that. Let's look at that because I don't want nobody to, you know, think I'm just saying stuff. Accursed. Anathema. Religious ban, excommunicated, cut off. A thing or person, a curse. Anathema, a curse. Curse. He's a curse. You're not only saying he's a curse, you're saying he's cursed because the curse was that he couldn't inherit the throne. And if he got on the throne anyway, he can't rightly. He can't rightly inherit it through that lineage. He cannot inherit it through that lineage. There's a curse in the lineage. And that's what you that's what your book says. Your book says it's cursed. Excommunicated. Let's look at excommunicated. What does that mean? Expelled or separated from communion with with a assembly and a a participation participation of of his ordinances, rights, and privileges. He's cut off. He's cut off. He's saying he cut off. he's cut off. Because he's cursed. Doomed to destruction of, or misery. Separated from the faithful. Cast out of the assembly. Excommunicated. Worthy of the curse. Detestable. Execrable. Wicked. Malignant. In the extreme. Curse. Curse. One of the definitions was curse. To utter a wish of evil against one. To imp imprecate evil upon. To call for mischief or injury. To fall upon. To execrate. The men were cursed. The, the forefathers in that lineage, um, Konia and his father Jehoiakim, were cursed. They both were cursed. And that would make the Messiah cursed coming through that lineage. To injure, to subject, to evil. To vex, harass, or tor torment with great calamities. To devote to evil. Hmm. Malediction. The expression of a wish of evil to another. Implication of evil. Affliction. Torment. Great vexation. The condemnation. Sentence of divine vengeance on sinners. He was cursed. Through his father Jehoiakim. Who was a sinner. Can't receive it through them. Cannot receive, cannot receive it through them. Denunciation of evil. Okay. Okay. So when we look at that lineage, when we look at that lineage. You look at that lineage, Jehoiakim was removed. Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim was the one that was removed from, from number 14. He's Josiah's son, Jehoiakim, the father of Konia. Two curses right there. Two curses. And then we have Joseph, their descendant. And we can look at what. 
what we should notice is that the only the only lineage in this book that's backwards The only lineage in this book that's backwards uh, sorry. Uh -oh. is this one. Is this one. And Yehoshua himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, as was thought, as was thought. Everybody thought he was Joseph's son. That's why they were saying, isn't this a, the carpenter's son? They thought he was his son. Which was the son of Heli. But this Joseph, uh... Joseph, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, Heli is his father-in-law. This is a woman's lineage. It's the only lineage in the in the scriptures that's backwards, and it had to be put in here. They had to put her lineage in here because of the law. That's why I read the law. That's why I read the law, because Mary is from Nathan, and Joseph is from Solomon. They needed both lineages in here because it proves the law was fulfilled and that he inherited the throne legally. He legally inherited the throne only if this is Mary's if this is Mary's lineage. Because if he comes through the other lineage, it's a curse in that lineage, and he cannot receive the throne. That's simple. That's simple. This is his father in law. This is Joseph father-in-law healing that's his father-in-law see you got you got uh which was the son of Mela, which was the son of menon which was the son of maaratha which was the son of nathan which was the son of david david's seed that's the only seed that matter david's seed they both david's seed the inheritance passed through the woman according to the inheritance for women she was married to joseph Expousal is marriage in the eyesight of Yah, so the Messiah could legally inherit the throne. She could not inherit the throne not being married to Joseph. If it wasn't Joseph, it would have had to been another relative, but she couldn't have he couldn't have put the seed in her through the spirit without her being married to one of her uh tribesmen and one of her father's kinsmen, which they both are. Solomon and Nathan were brothers. One came from Solomon, one came from Nathan. They were distant cousins that fulfilled the law of the woman inheritance. That the woman being able to inherit the throne of David for her son. He inherited the throne through David. That's what it is. That's what it is. This is his son in law. This is not his this is not his son. And you know, um I I, I hate I was really looking forward to this book I was really I was really uh happy about that because I like to miss some books I like to read uh, Jasher I like Enoch I like um, Jubilees you know the Apocrypha you know I really like those books those books are uh, history those are those are our history and uh, I enjoy reading them and so I was hoping that uh you know I didn't expect the book to be perfect but that one word you changed blasphemed I got a book of blasphemy here you know and it's like couldn't pick it up couldn't pick it up you know I thumbed through it a couple times but basically it's just been holding my printed paper you know and uh I don't know one of uh one of my sisters is uh we reading the book of Enoch three of us are reading the book of Enoch uh on the Shabbat and uh we checking for discrepancies and you know that's how I'm gonna look at it you know from now on I, if I'm looking at it, I'm probably gonna be reading with some other people and just checking to see what's different because I don't know that's you know that's a, that was a big thing for me um, and 
uh, I was really gonna make a different kind of video until you responded back to me um, the way you did and asked me to respond uh, to your questions and I hope that I uh, satisfied uh, my response uh, satisfied the questions um, and what I was trying to point out point out to you um, I don't know I hope you guys fix it I hope you guys I hope you guys uh, fix it I think it's a good idea I think it's a good work and uh, I hope you fix it I hope you fix it and uh, I pray this was a blessing and you know maybe maybe others aren't as uh, sensitive to this issue as I am about uh, about uh, that discrepancy in the book but it, it's good for people to know because they don't need to be thinking that Mary Joseph is Mary's father because they taken hold of a, of a uh, doctrine and uh, also if you guys are sincere in your work lose the logos lose the logos I'm, I like symbology I'm into symbology symbol look Masonic that symbol y'all chose it look Masonic and then with this discrepancy in your in your book makes me wonder if uh, there's a mason on your team or somebody that does not is not sincere in the belief of the Messiah and the truth of this word and hey if it was you know if it's not if I'm mistaken then you know forgive me but to remove uh, those thoughts from people that do study these type of things and do understand that uh, images, icons, logos are uh, symbolic messages. You should get rid of. It. You should get rid of. It. And uh, fix your book. I pray you fix your book. And uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close this on out. I hey, uh, appreciate you giving me time and uh, listening to. Uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, point out where you were wrong. That does show. It says a lot. It says a lot. By that fruit, you would know them. That says a lot. Okay, with that, I'm going to say shalom.